Again, I want to thank all of you for coming to this. I, it just means so much to the movement and to what and to Scott's memory and to the to the incredible energy that he put into our needs. Um, I want to give a special note of thanks to Mark Ash, who's not here. He's in Sonoma, California. Mark had, had worked with uh, Scott in, uh, in, in Reader Supported News and was his employer. And uh, Mark has provided this, uh, this, this incredible funeral and memorial service for Scott. Um, and I, our appreciation, all of us, I, I, I think I speak for everyone to say how much we appreciate Mark standing behind his political director for, uh, for reader supported news and, uh, and his generosity. Um, I hurt. I'm sad. I'm angry. angry. And I'm afraid. And I thank, I thank very much Deb, Debbie um, Griffin for her concluding words in that poignant and extremely moving address and eulogy that she gave for Scott to help us all. Is that while I'm sad and I'm angry and I hurt, I have hope. I have hope because of people like you who are here. They're here that are that are the movement. You are the movement. Scott was the movement. I am the movement. All of you are the movement. We must carry it forward. I'm sad because Scott died a very painful and lonely death. It was a death of his choosing. He chose this. And for that, I, I honor him. off alone in the night and die and suffer. Because Scott was about not bothering people. He didn't let any of us know, any of us who were his friends. We didn't know this was happening. We suspected there was something going on. But we didn't know that he was. It took us a week to really find him. because the insurance companies killed him. Because this is the absolute epitome, of the perfect example, the living and dying example that we all face with our insurance system. A very malignant and, I've been cautioned about using the word insane. I've been told I'm not supposed to do that because I think it truly is an insane system. Mentally unwell. Mentally unwell. It is, it, is, it is a malicious system that, that this for-profit insurance industry that is based upon its profits and its money that it makes is based upon denying us care. Why do we tolerate this? Why have we set up this kind of a system? Why do we even begin to, to, to tolerate this? It's time. It's time. It's been 10 years that we've been hollering about Medicare for all. It's been 15 years since John Conyers has been presenting his Medicare for All bill in Congress. In 2003 was the first year that was produced. It's time for us to get behind it. It's time for us to pass it. We want it. We need it. And without it, we will keep dying. We will keep suffering. And the insurance companies will keep driving us to bankruptcy and death. And that's the stark words, and that's the stark, stark truth of it. And I am angry. 
But I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful because of you, again. Because there is a movement, and a movement is afoot. More and more people are coming on board. You know, even American business is starting to wake up to the fact that Medicare for all makes sense. It will save their money. It will save them, it will increase their competitiveness. You know, once we can do that, once we can get American business on board, like we have the physicians of America, now 60% of physicians in America want, want Medicare for all. Once we can get business on board for this, you watch. The Republicans will take this issue and run with it. And that's what I want. It should be a Republican issue. It should be a Democratic issue. It should be a, all of us should understand that this is going to save our lives. Medicare for all. And just as Scott's last words were, those are going to be my final words right now here in memory and honor of Scott. Pass Medicare, Medicare for, for all, all now. Yeah.